Good morning, good morning, good morning, you guys, and praise be to God. I thank God for allowing me to wake up this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. And I plead the blood of Jesus over this live audio, and I plead the blood of Jesus over every listener. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen on this morning. Praise God, you guys. Welcome back to the Morning Bible Reading with Victoria Cherie. I am still in the book of Exodus. Today, I will be reading out of chapter 16. Praise be to God. And they took their journey from Elam, and all the congregation of the children of Israel came unto the wilderness of Sin, which is between Elam and Sinai, on the fifteenth day of the second month after their departing out of the land of Egypt. And the whole congregation of the children of Israel murmured against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. And the children of Israel said unto them, Would to God we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the flesh pots, and when we did eat bread to the full. For ye have brought us forth into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then said the Lord unto Moses, Behold, I will rain bread from heaven for you, and the people shall go out and gather a certain rate every day, that I may prove them whether they will walk in my law or not, or no. And it, and it shall come to pass that on the sixth day they shall prepare that which they bring in, and it shall be twice as much as they gather daily. And Moses and Aaron said unto all the children of Israel at even, Then ye shall know that the Lord hath brought you out from the land of Egypt. And in the morning then ye shall see the glory of the Lord, for that he heareth your murmurings against the Lord. And what are we that ye murmur against us? And Moses said, This shall be when the Lord shall give you in the evening flesh to eat, and in the morning bread to the full, for that the Lord heareth your murmurings, which ye murmur against him. And what are we? Your murmurings are not against us, but against the Lord. And Moses spake unto Aaron, Say unto all the congregation of the children of Israel, Come near before the Lord, for he hath heard your murmurings. And it came to pass, as Aaron spake unto the whole congregation of the children of Israel, that they looked toward the wilderness, and, behold, the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, I have heard the murmurings of the children of Israel. Speak unto them, saying, at even ye shall eat flesh, and in the morning ye shall be filled with bread, and ye shall know that I am the Lord your God. And it came to pass that at even the quails came up and covered the camp, and in the morning the dew lay round about the host. And when the dew that lay was gone up, behold, upon the face of the wilderness there lay a small round thing, as small as the or frost on the ground and when the children of israel saw it they said one to another it is manna for they wist not what it was and moses said unto them this is the bread which the lord hath given you to eat this is the thing which the lord hath commanded gather of it every man according to his eating and omer for every man according to the number of your persons Take ye every man for them which are in his tents. And the children of Israel did so, and gathered some more, some less. And when they did meet it with an omer, he that gathered much had nothing over, and he that gathered little had no lack. They gathered every man according to his eating. And Moses said, Let no man leave of it till the morning. Notwithstanding, they hearkened not unto Moses, but some of them left of it until the morning, and it bred worms and stank, and Moses was wroth with them. And they gathered it every morning, every man according to his eating, and when the sun waxed hot, it melted. And it came to pass that on the sixth day they gathered twice as much bread, two omers for one man, and all the rulers of the congregation came and told Moses. And he said unto them, This is that which the Lord hath said, To morrow is the rest of the holy Sabbath unto the Lord. Bake that which ye will bake today, 
and seeth that ye will see it, and that which remaineth over lay up for you to be kept until the morning. And they laid it up to the morning as Moses bade, and it did not stink, neither was there any worm therein. And Moses said, Eat that today, for today is a Sabbath unto the Lord. Today ye shall not find it in the field. Six days ye shall gather it, but on the seventh day, which is the Sabbath, in it there shall be none. And it came to pass that there went out some of the people on the seventh day for to gather, and they found none. And the Lord said unto Moses, How long refuse ye to keep my commandments and my laws? See, for that the Lord hath given you the Sabbath, therefore he giveth you on the sixth day the bread of two days. Abide ye every man in his place, let no man go out of his place on the seventh day. So the people rested on the seventh day. And the house of Israel called the name thereof manna, and it was like coriander seed, white, and the taste of it was like wafers made with honey. And Moses said, This is the thing which the Lord commanded, Fill an omer of it to be kept for your generations, that they may see the bread wherewith I have fed you in the wilderness, when I brought you forth from the land of Egypt. And Moses said unto Aaron, Take a pot, and put an omer full of manna therein, and lay it up before the Lord, to be kept for your generations. As the Lord commanded Moses, so Aaron laid it up before the testimony to be kept. And the children of Israel did eat manna forty years, until they came to a land inhabited. They did eat manna, until they came unto the borders of the land of Canaan. Now an omer is the tenth part of an effort. Praise the Lord. And the word of the Lord is blessed on this morning, you guys. Praise the Lord. Good morning, Sister V. God bless you. In Jesus' name. So I thank the Lord for the reading of the word on this day. Chapter 16 um, just goes to show um, so many things. You know, in the, in the obedience of the children of Israel, the Lord provided um, in their murmurings, in their complaining. Moses was telling them, like, you're not, you're not murmuring to us and, and Aaron. You're actually murmuring to the Lord. And that goes to show you that when we sit here and we complain about the things that goes on in our lives, we're not complaining to ourselves. You know, we're, we're not. We're complaining to the Lord because if you really think about it, God provides everything that we do. Our steps are ordered in the Lord. So if we sit here and take the time out and and start complaining about the things that we're dealing with instead of praising God in the midst of the things that we're going through. That's a different thing. So when we give praise to God, we praise his name, we worship him in the beauty of his holiness and everything that we're dealing with. We praise him in our valleys. We praise him in our mountaintops. But when we decide to complain, that means we decide to look at the neck. We decide to be negative. We decide to focus on the things that we're looking at as negative instead of finding the good in every situation. So what they were doing they were complaining that they did not have anything to eat. And then they had the nerve to say, well, you brought us out of Egypt into the wilderness so that we may die of hunger. No. So they started to depict and look what was in front of them and complain. And for God, they served a God that provided. The same God that brought them out of Egypt and protected them from the enemy. They forgot and he would be the same God to provide for them. So the Lord then again approved to the children of Israel that he is the Lord, their God. He provided for them manna and he gave them specific instructions that they did not again abide by the first time. Some took more and some took less. And those he spoke of that and those who took more manna than they were supposed to take, they ended up having none left. But those who abided by God and took less they had no lack that means God still provided for them in their obedience sometimes we get so greedy and so selfish and try to keep things of our own without listening and giving back to God and then we turn around and we have nothing left but it's the little it's in the little the ones that took a little bread a little manna they had no lack and that just goes to show in so many different aspects and areas of my life. I remember, you know, 
God only wants 10%, 10% of our, our first works, the things that we've done, our first fruits. And that's, that's little or nothing compared to 100%. So he's giving us 90% of what we work for. All he's asking was for 10%. And that's a small portion, but that's an obedience. That's, a, that's the obedience of what we will show our Father who is allowing us. Because everything belongs to God. Everything belongs to God. And I've learned in my lifetime of not paying my tithes that I always was suffering. I always was lacking. And I'm like, why? I'm, I'm, I'm making a decent amount of money. I know that I can, you know, pay this and pay that. But what am I doing wrong? Why am I always suffering? Why am I always, you know, living to this point and don't have enough to carry over to the next week? But then when I began to come to God and I rededicated my life back to Christ in 2015, and I began to pay my tithes when I was working, Every time it was time for me to go forth to look at my account, I still had extra left over. And I know that was nothing but God because due to my obedience, God blessed me in that. And so I encourage you all, like we, we can sit here and we can make the choice to either complain and not listen to God and not follow through and not be obedient. But then what does that leave you? That leaves you with lacking that leaves you with complaining and stressing out about the things that you should not be stressing out about? Or should we sit here and praise God even in the midst of our storms? Because you know one time he's brought you out before and he is the same God. He has not changed. He is our provider. God keeps us. He protects us and he hears us. He hears every little thing. And that's why it's important for us to speak life over our entire lives. But it's a choice. You made that decision and God has given us the opportunity to make that choice. What do you choose today? And so I love this chapter. I thank the Lord for what he has done for me. I thank God for just helping me to realize, to, to find the good in everything and just continue to be obedient to him, to listen to him and to keep his commandments and to focus on him and to know that he is truly able to bring me out of any situation and god is always able to provide me and my needs and he is listening to everything so i praise god on today i really truly thank god for the blessing i receive in my spirit and i pray that you were blessed in the mighty name of jesus and i thank god on this morning as i do every morning i would like to extend an invite to everyone that's listening to come listen to the word of God that's going forth every day, seven days a week at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time with my ministry, Lalak Ministry, which is under leadership of my pastor, Pastor Dr. Jimmy Griffith. You can do so by dialing in at 773-922-8270. Again, the number 773-922-8270. Praise be to God. I plead the blood of Jesus over our children on this morning, over our families and our friends. Lord God, and I just ask you, Father, to continue to uplift us, O God. And on this day, I ask you, Father, to continue to remove those things that are not like you, God, out of us in the mighty name of Jesus, and that you will continue to pour in us more of you, more of your spirit, the Holy Spirit, more of the power, power of your anointing, and more virtue. Father, we pray for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding on this morning of your word, Lord God. And we just thank you, Father, and also, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we ask you to continue to bind up the hand of the enemy over our lives in the name of Jesus. And we come before you, Father, repenting of all sins, in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you guys on this morning. I pray that you have a blessed and prosperous day in the Lord. Amen. Good morning, good morning, good morning, you guys, and welcome to the morning Bible reading with Victoria Sheree. Praise be to God, you guys, and I thank the Lord for waking me up this morning to be able to continue to read his word. And I plead the blood of Jesus over this live audio, and I plead the blood of Jesus over every listener. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. So, you guys, we are still in the book of Exodus. I'm moving forward to chapter 17. Praise God. And all the congregation of the children of Israel journeyed from the wilderness of sin after their journeys, according to the commandment of the Lord, and pitched in Rephidim, and there was no water for the people to drink. 
Wherefore the people did chide with Moses and said, Give us water that we may drink. And Moses said unto them, Why chide ye with me? Wherefore do ye tempt the Lord? And the people thirsted there for water, and the people murmured against Moses and said, Wherefore is this that thou hast brought us up out of Egypt to kill us and our children and our cattle with thirst? And Moses cried unto the Lord, saying, What shall I do unto this people? They be almost ready to stone me. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go on before the people, and take with thee of the elders of Israel, and thy rod, wherewith thou smotest the river. Take in thine hand, and go. Behold, I will stand before thee there upon the rock in Horeb, and thou shalt smite the rock, and there shall come water out of it, that the people may drink. And Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. And he called the name of the place Messiah and Meribah, because of the chiding of the children of Israel, and because they tempted the Lord, saying, Is the Lord among us or not? Then came Amalek, and fought with Israel and Rephidim. And Moses said unto Joshua, Choose us out men, and go out, fight with Amalek. To morrow I will stand on the top of the hill with the rod of God in my hand. So Joshua did as Moses had said to him and fought with Amalek. And Moses, Aaron, and Hur went up to the top of the hill. And it came to pass when Moses held up his hand that Israel prevailed. And when he let down his hand, Amalek prevailed. But Moses' hands were heavy, and they took a stone and put it under him, and he sat thereon, and Aaron and Hur stayed up his hands, the one on the one side and the other on the other side, and his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. And Joshua discomfited Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword. And the Lord said unto Moses, Write this for a memorial in a book. And rehearse it in the ears of Joshua, for I will utterly put out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven. And Moses built an altar and called the name of it Jehovah Nisi, for he said, Because the Lord hath sworn that the Lord will have war with Amalek from generation to generation. And the word of the Lord is blessed on this morning. Praise be to God, you guys. I thank the Lord for the reading. I thank God that even in the midst of the Lord being so faithful to the children of Israel, they begin to murmur and then they begin to, you know, murmur against God and state that is he not with us? And, you know, it just goes to show and I'm like, Lord, please forgive me for ever feeling like that you are not ever with me just because of my circumstances that's presented before me. You know, the children of Israel was thirsty and they wanted something to drink. But none of them cried out to the Lord. They began to murmur. They began to complain about what they had lack of. And knowing that they served a God that brought them from a mighty long way, that delivered them out of the hands of the enemy, that gave them manna from heaven to to eat because they were hungry. Then they they forgot that the Lord would be able to provide for them water. And this is what happens. The enemy comes to take away what God has done, meaning he comes in a sense of help, just our our memory. He steals it from us. So we begin to be forgetful, forgetful, forget what God has already done. And so the children of Israel went forth. And in this moment, they begin to get to the point to where they wanted to stone the very man that God sent to help them. And sometimes we get into a position of that happening. You know, we, we lay before people, we lay before God. And then these people that we're helping then in turn want to blame us. And so just know this thing is not new. This is not something that you're just experiencing on today, but this has happened over generations to generations. So I thank God in the reading of the book of Exodus chapter 17, that it goes to show us that we still have to trust God in the midst of what we are doing. When God sends us out to do the assignments of him, some may not agree, and that is quite okay. God will deal with those people. But the ones that God sent us out to do the work, 
and to gain and to win the souls for his kingdom we go forth in his power in god's power there's nothing in our own power and nothing in our own might but in everything is from the the power of god so i just thank the lord on this morning and help me to see even more in depth into my life and what god has has for me and what i have to continue to push through the negativity, push through those who stand up against me, because it's not me. They're standing up against God. They're murmuring before God. They're complaining before God. So I thank God in this and I ask the Lord to continue to help me to continue to lay before his feet and to stay in the presence of him that I may go forth and do and be pleasing in his sight and do all that he has commanded me to do. So I thank God. I pray that you all were blessed on this morning. I pray that we all continue to stay in the word of God, fast and pray and really listen and hear God and go forth in spite of what others may say. Amen. So as I do every morning, you guys, I would like to extend an invite to you all to come listen to the word of God going forth every day, seven days a week at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time with my ministry, Lalak Ministry, which is under the leadership of my pastor, Pastor Dr. Jimmy Griffith. You can do so by dialing in at 773-922-8270 and get the number 773-922-8270. Praise be to God, you guys. I pray that we all go forth and have a blessed and prosperous day in the Lord. God bless you guys in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, good morning, good morning, you guys, and welcome to the Morning Bible Reading with Victoria Cherie. Praise be to God, you guys, and I plead the blood of Jesus over this live audio, and I plead the blood of Jesus over every listener. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. So praise God, you guys. Good morning. Welcome back to the Morning Bible Reading with Victoria Cherie, and I'm still in the book of Exodus. Praise God, and we're going to be reading out of chapter 18. Praise the Lord. Amen. Good morning, Sister Barbara. God bless you. In Jesus' name. When Jethro, the priest of Midian, Moses' father-in-law, heard of all that God had done for Moses and for Israel, his people, and that the Lord had brought Israel out of Egypt, then Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, took Zipporah, Moses' wife, after he had sent her back, and her two sons, of which the name of the one was Gershom. For he said, I have been an alien in a strange land. And the name of the other was Elizer. For the God of my father said he was mine help and delivered me from the sword of Pharaoh. And Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, came with his sons and his wife unto Moses into the wilderness where he encamped at the mount of God. And he said unto Moses, I, thy father-in-law Jethro, am come unto thee, and thy wife and her two sons with her. And Moses went out to meet his father-in-law and did obedience and kissed him. And they asked each other of their welfare. And they came into the tent. And Moses told his father-in-law all that the Lord had done unto Pharaoh and to the Egyptians for Israel's sake, and all the travail that had come upon them by the way and how the Lord delivered them. And Jethro rejoiced for all the goodness which the Lord had done to Israel, whom he had delivered out of the hand of the Egyptians. And Jethro said, Blessed be the Lord who hath delivered you out of the land of the Egyptians, and out of the hand of Pharaoh, who have delivered the people from under the hand of the Egyptians. Now I know that the Lord is greater than all gods, for in the thing wherein they dealt proudly, he was above them. And Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, took a burnt offering and sacrifices for God. And Aaron came, and all the elders of Israel, to eat bread with Moses' father-in-law before God. And it came to pass on the morrow that Moses sat to judge the people. And the people stood by Moses from the morning unto the evening. And when Moses' father-in-law saw all that he did to the people, he said, What is this thing that thou doest to the people? Why sittest thou thyself alone, and all the people stand by thee from morning unto even? And Moses said unto his father-in-law, Because the people come unto me to inquire of God. When they have a matter, they come unto me, and I judge between one and another. And I do make them know the statutes of God and his laws. And Moses' father-in-law said unto him, The thing that thou doest is not good. Thou wouldst surely wear it away, both thou 
and this people that is with thee. For this thing is too heavy for thee. Thou art not able to perform it thyself alone. Hearken now unto my voice. I will give thee counsel, and God shall be with thee. Be thou for the people to Godward, that thou mayest bring the causes unto God. And thou shalt teach them ordinances and laws, and shalt show them the way wherein they must walk, and the work that they must do. Moreover, thou shalt provide out of the people able men, such as fear God, men of truth, hating covetousness, and place such of, over them to be rulers of thousands and rulers of hundreds, rulers of fifties and rulers of tens. And let them judge the people at all seasons. And it shall be that every great matter they shall bring unto thee, but every small matter they shall judge. So shall it be easier for thyself, and they shall bear the burden with thee. If thou shalt do this thing, and God command thee so, then thou shalt be able to endure, and all this people shall also go to their place in, in peace. So Moses hearkened to the voice of his father-in-law, and did all that he said. And Moses chose able men out of all Israel, and made them heads over the people, rulers of thousands, rulers of hundred, rulers of fifties, and rulers of tens. And they judged the people at all seasons. The hard causes they brought unto Moses, but every small matter they judged themselves. And Moses let his father-in-law depart, and he went his way in his own land. Praise be to God and welcome. I thank the Lord for the reading of the word, and the word of the Lord is blessed in the third month. Praise God. So this chapter here just to specifically speak about Moses' father-in-law rejoicing with him. As Moses shared his testimony of what God did for him and the children of Moses, bringing them out of Egypt and what God did to Pharaoh. And the blessing behind it is that, you know, Jethro could have been envious. He could have stated um, nothing but negativity. But Jethro was looking upon Moses and praising God and saying, this is this is wow. He was just ecstatic. But then as he began to see how Moses operated, I don't know if this was what God has given him, but it was wisdom that came upon Jethro, I would say that, um, in Moses. And we will see in chapter 19 how that went out with Moses taking heed to what Jethro stated about putting other people over um, the children of Israel and over the land instead of him having to do it all. Because Jethro saw it as, you know, wear and tear. But what's interesting to me is that in this chapter, I did not see where Moses listened to Jethro. And then he went to God to inquire, to get confirmation. So that part um, I did not see. But it's interesting to me is that usually that's what happens. You know, we'll listen to someone of greater stature, of greater wisdom, who was older, um, and oftentimes it may pan out to be good and sometimes it may pan out to be not so good. Um, but I've learned in my past is that, you know, there are going to be so many people to give us great advice. What they think you should do, what will be best for you. But the ultimate end result is what did God say? And, you know, oftentimes we can listen to said another, but the best thing to do is to inquire to God. And to see if it falls in line with what he has planned for your life. Amen. So I thank God on this morning. It was just a blessing for me to read this and just to see the difference, you know, in the movement of Moses and then how everything kind of shifted over once his father-in-law came. So this is I love reading the word of God because it is it's like a story. Um, and I like when I say story, I know it's like a story, but I'm like, it's the, like the stories on TV. <laughs> it has its plots. It has its meaning. It has that underlining, you know, issue or cause. And I love it because now that I'm beginning to read even more, there's a visual behind it. So I thank the Lord and I pray that you all begin to read your word, read the Bible, read the word of God and allow the Lord to give you what you need on this day. Praise be to God. So as I do every morning, you all would like to extend an invite to you all to come listen to the word of God going forth every day, seven days a week and 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time with my ministry, Lalak Ministry, which is on the leadership of 
my pastor, Pastor Dr. Jimmy Griffith. You can do so by dialing in at 773-922-8270. Again, that number is 773-922-8270. Praise be to God, you guys, and God bless. I pray that we all have a blessed and prosperous day in the Lord, in Jesus' name. And I plead the blood of Jesus over our families, over our children, over our friends, and over our whereabouts, wherever we may go, over our vehicles, over our jobs, over schools, in the mighty name of Jesus, that the Lord will continue to protect us and keep us and we ask that the Lord continue to bind the hand of the enemy over our lives any plans any attacks that he has already tried we ask the Lord to continue to shut it down and block it in the mighty name of Jesus we pray amen God bless you all in Jesus name